I went to school to pursue a Bachelor of Fine Arts in musical theater. I was a part of a program that required us to audition at the end of the year to be invited back for the other three years. Uh, we were told early on that we had to strive to become the hardest worker in the room. That in the real world, there would always be someone prettier than you, skinnier than you, and more talented than you. Someone who would study, train, dance, diet, and exercise harder than you. We were encouraged oftentimes to outperform one another, uh, outperform our peers. I qualified to stay in the program at the end of my freshman year, but I felt an increasing amount of pressure from myself, my peers, and my teachers. Um, it started with the urge to overexercise and micromanage my diet, but grew into something more as the credits piled up and my standards for myself were raised. Uh, in one semester during junior year, I was taking three dance classes, plus helping out as a TA for a fourth, in addition to my other classes. Um, in other words, I spent hours at a time inadvertently staring at myself in the mirror, picking apart my physique, and comparing my various body parts to those of my peers. In short, my college career was spent in a miserable cycle of restricting and then binging, and restricting and binging, and restricting and binging, <laughs> and on occasion purging over and over and over again. Um, I came home from Thanksgiving break during my junior year. I saw my dad for the first time in a few months and later heard him refer to me as a concentration camp victim for how small I was. And to me, that was a shining moment, <laughs> a compliment of the highest degree. At least 30 million people of all ages and genders suffer from an eating disorder in the US alone. Children as young as three are expressing concerns about being fat or ugly. Cover spreads of stick-thin supermodels and men with washboard abs flood the checkout aisles of our grocery stores. Magazines, movies, and social media outlets in the US are praising women who define this idealistic body type, a thin stature, a sunken face, protruding collarbones and thigh gaps. Oh, and if you thought that men were lucky enough to be excused from this trend, I assure you, you're sorely mistaken. The majority of men who have body image issues tend to suffer instead from what we call muscle dysmorphia, an unhealthy obsession about being big, vascular, and muscular. Up until the very moment I stumbled upon starting strength, I struggled with my relationship to food. I was no longer starving myself to extinction, but I was still far from healthy. I had yo-yoed on so many diets, I'm certain by now I'd gone through them all, but while strength training is not the cure, for disordered eating and body image issues, it did initiate a paradigm shift in my own mind. From focusing on a dissection of my body's every imperfection to an acknowledgement, a sense of pride in what my body can do. It empowered me, it gave me back my confidence, and it rid me of these chains that whispered enemy in my ear at the very thought of sustenance. And coincidentally, I'm happier with my body image now than I have ever been even being 30 pounds heavier than I was in college. Food is fuel. It's a necessary component of recovery to help our bodies to get strong. Food is not characterized as good or bad. It does not require punishment, but it's not a reward. We do not perform hours of cardio to earn it. We do not feel guilty consuming it. It does not determine value. My life's purpose as a starting strength coach is to show my clients their true potential, what your body is capable of doing and what you are capable of achieving through hard work and perseverance is far more valuable than the weight on the bathroom scale, the figure in the mirror, or the visibility of your skeleton, period. We all have insecurities and we all have doubts, coaches and clients alike, I assure you. In appearance, confidence, job security, relationships, we all go through these things. Training for strength teaches us the confidence to face tasks that are difficult, to face insecurities that are perhaps a little painful, and ultimately to love and value ourselves for the hard work we contribute to bettering our quality of life. 
to watch more videos about mental health and confidence. Subscribe down below and click here.